All right, so uh, as I guess as we just said, <clears throat> assume that the words are independent and that allows you to rewrite it uh, like that. So if you look at that form, that's actually identical to, if you've seen naive base classifier, that is naive base classifier, only we threw away the priors because we said that we're ranking and when you're ranking, priors don't make, it, don't make any difference at all. <clears throat> okay, so the next, <clears throat> Uh, the next step is uh, we're actually going to start. Uh, we're going to start defining these guys. So the probability that the individual word is present or absent in a document, depending on whether the document is relevant or not relevant. So I'm going to make a couple of definitions. P W little P W is the probability that the word W is present, assuming that we're in the relevant class. QW is the probability that it's present for the non-relevant class. Okay, they're different quantities because we're modeling relevant and non-relevant differently. Okay, so um, the next assumption that the model makes uh, is a little bit baffling and a little bit weird at first sight, but it actually makes a lot more uh, a lot of sense once you, when, once you drill into it. So the assumption is this: if you have an empty document, if you have a document that doesn't contain any words. So that's the zero vector. It's a document where all the DWs are zero. Then we're going to assume that the probability of that document under the relevant class and under the non-relevant class are exactly the same. Okay? Weird assumption, but it's not a terribly, you know, this is not an assumption that makes you, oh, it's not an assumption that irks you. Uh, because, okay, it's an empty document and you're saying that it's equally likely in the relevant and then the non-relevant non class. Okay, so what's the big deal? It's empty anyway. It doesn't have any words in it. Fine. Right. So now it turns out that once you make this assumption, uh, you can play a little trick with your ranking formula. So let's look at our <coughs> ranking formula. That's uh, we're saying that our probability of relevance is rank equivalent to that ratio. That's what we've done up until this moment. Uh, now let's expand this ratio. DW is either zero or one. The word is either in the document or it's not in the document. So the numerator, the, the product, by the way, this product goes over the entire vocabulary, right? It's the words that are in the document and the words that are not in the document because you have to take care of zero events as well as the one events. <clears throat> so the top, what is it? It breaks into two parts. If the word actually was in the document, then you use PW, right? Because PW is the probability that the word was in the document assuming that you're in the relevant. If the word was not in the document, you have to use 1 minus PW. Why? Because that's the probability that, that the word did not occur in a relevant document. That's 1 minus PW. So, um, so your numerator is a product of where those guys. And similarly for the denominator, it breaks into two parts. QWs for the words that are in the document, 1 minus QWs for the words that are not in the document. Okay, now I can regroup this a little bit. So for all the words that are in the document, I have PW divided by QW. For all the words that are not in the document, I have 1 minus PW divided by 1 minus QW. Okay? Now the next thing that I'm going to do is a little bit weird. I'm going to divide that whole quantity by the product of 1 minus PW divided by 1 minus QW over the entire vocabulary, right? Here, I had the product over everything in the document, uh, sorry, over all the words that are not in the document, and here, the product is over everything, over all the words in the vocabulary. Now, I'm going to claim that I can divide by that with no change in the formula. And the reason I can do that is that assumption that I made right there. Right? So why is that? That's because... <clears throat> that product is the same as the ratio of the probability of the empty document under, under the relevant class to the probability of the empty document under the non-relevant class. So why is that? If you have an empty document, it doesn't have any words in it. So all the DWs for that document are zero. So for every word, you're going to be using 1 minus PW as a probability under the relevant class and 1 minus QW as a probability under the non-relevant class. So this is really just the definition of the probability ratio for the empty document. And my assumption was that those probabilities are equal, that they're the same thing. And if they're the same thing, then the ratio is going to be 1, and I can divide anything by 1, and it's still 
going to be the same thing. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking this part, dividing it by that quantity, and that's not going to change anything. But look at what happens with the formula. These 1 minus p values and these 1 minus p values, are they going to cancel? Almost. Very good point. So a lot of them are going to go away. Everything that's not in the document will go away. Why? Because this product, it has two parts. It's the words that are in the document, D, right, times the words that are not in the document, D. So the words that are not in the document are going to cancel out with this. And what's going to be left is the product over words in the document, uh, 1 minus PW divided by 1 minus PW. And those probabilities are going to go under that product, because that's the product of the words in the document. Right? And what I'm going to get in the end is that. So I'm dividing by that. So 1 minus PW is actually going to go to the denominator right there. So I have PW over 1 minus PW, QW over 1 minus QW, multiplied over all the words that occurred in that document. Now, uh, that's a lot of algebra. Why did we go through this? So um, the, reason that, the real reason that we went through this is very practical. It's computation. Originally, our probabilities involved a product over every word in the vocabulary. Right? And there are lots and lots of words in the vocabulary. There are millions of words in the vocabulary. Now we have a formula that is just over the, in terms of the words in the document. And there is a lot fewer of them. Right? So here, you would have to do a million multiplications. Here, you just have to do a thousand or so. Okay? So, so the reason is very much practical. Uh, you are reducing it to a small percentage of the vocabulary. What you're also doing, and that's not going to happen right now, but in a couple of slides, this is one part that's going to allow us to redefine the formula in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the overlap between the document and the query. And when you have the overlap, you are quasi-linear, and quasi-linear means you can do term at a time. And term at a time is a really good way uh, to execute uh, queries. So, uh, so it really paves the way for a lot of uh, optimizations, making this uh, assumption. And the assumption isn't terribly bad, right? It's fairly innocuous. It doesn't, it doesn't seem horribly wrong when you look 